What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can add custom materials to your models in Fusion 360. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna model out a brick wall and we want to add a brick material to it. And in this case, I don't wanna use any of the materials contained inside of the Fusion 360 library. I wanna use a custom material. And in this case, I'm gonna pick a custom material from polyhaven.com because they're free and they're CC zero, meaning I don't need to give any attribution or anything like that. But what I wanna do is I wanna take uh, one of these materials like this brick wall 005 and I want to bring it into Fusion 360. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna download my material. Material. And in this case, remember that you're going to want to bring in um, a couple different kinds of maps. So you want to make sure that you download, um, you don't really need the blend uh, or the GLTF. You do want to make sure you bring in the diffuse map, the roughness map. You don't really need the ambient occlusion. Um, you want to bring in the displacement and probably the normal map. So we can actually leave all of these in here and we'll probably be good enough. You probably don't need this one, but let's go ahead and let's download this file and unzip it. And so you want to make sure you extract the zip file that this comes in and you can look at it and you can see these textures. And in this case, we're specifically concerned about the diffuse map, the displacement map, and the roughness map. So now let's jump over into Fusion 360. So the first thing is I have not found a way to just create a custom material. Um, and first thing I wanna do is I want to go in, I wanna right click on this surface and I wanna click on the option for appearance. You can also access that by going to modify appearance right here. We don't really want physical material because this actually has to do with the properties of the material. And in this case, we're just worried about the way this looks. So I'm gonna click on appearance right here and notice how at the moment um, I've got a link to the Fusion 360 materials and um, that's pretty much it. And so for the moment, that's really all we have. As far as I know, there's no option to like right click in here and create materials. I'm going to delete my unused, but um, there's no option in here to right click and create a new material. What you want to do instead is you want to take a material that's already in your design. So you can either do this steel satin, which I think is what's uh, there by default, but I could also pick something like this concrete and I'm going to apply it to the surface. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to take this material and I'm going to cut customize it by um, doing a duplicate, or you could just edit this. But in this case, I may want that concrete. So I'm just gonna do an edit and I'm just going to rename this. And in this case, I'm gonna rename it to brick right here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna click on the option for advanced in here, because advanced is going to give us the ability to make adjustments to this material. Now, one thing about this is make sure when you do this that you're picking a material in here that has a texture applied to it. So like for example, um, if I was to duplicate this steel satin right here and then edit that, notice how this looks different because it's a color as opposed to this one, which I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna edit. Notice how it looks a little bit different because it's an actual like material textures applied to it. So make sure that you're editing one of these with the materials applied to it because you're gonna get better options in here. But now what I wanna do is I wanna go to the advanced options and I want to load in my texture image. So I can do that by clicking the little drop down right here and clicking on the option for edit image. So when I do that, what I can do is I can click on this line right here. In or I can click on that line and I can pop up a window where I can access this folder. And in this case, I wanna apply this brick wall diffuse material right here. So when I do that and I click on done and I click on apply, Notice how my icon over here on the right hand side adjusts to show a new preview. So once you click on apply, it's going to update your preview icon. But now I'm gonna drag this brick, I'm gonna place it on this surface right here. Now let's make some adjustments to this brick material. So first off, I'm going to adjust the size a little bit. And to do that, I can go into the drop down right here for edit image. And what I can do is I can come in here and I can make adjustments. So for example, if I want this to be smaller, I can adjust just adjust the sample size. Now, one thing about this is when we do this, um, notice how there's an option here for link texture transforms. We want to check this box because what's gonna happen is we're gonna load in other maps in here for the reflection 
and the uh, bumpiness or the displacement. Now we wanna make sure if we make this image bigger or smaller, it's applied to the other images as well. If you do not check this box, then you're going to adjust just this but then your normal map or something else is not going to adjust and your texture is going to look really funky. So make sure that you check this box. I feel like it should be checked by default, but um, just make sure that it's checked. But now you can adjust the size of that material in here by adjusting the scale. So notice how if I type in 35 inches and hit tab, this is going to adjust the size of the material in here. If I was to type in 10, Notice how it gets a lot smaller. And one thing about that is notice how this button right here, or this little thing um, that looks like a chain, I think it's a, it's a link actually. Um, what it does is it links the size of your um, width and your height so that you maintain the proportions of your image. Generally speaking, I would not recommend unchecking this because if I made this like a 35, 35, that uncheck, notice how I start getting distortion in here. So just make sure that you leave this checked and turned on. And so at the moment, we're not gonna worry too much about the repeat. I mean, you can turn the tiling off, but that looks terrible. Um, so I can't think of a reason why I would ever turn the tiling off. Um, so we're just going to leave this as done. Maybe you just want to put something in the middle of a wall or something like that. But um, now what we can do is let's jump over into rendered view for a second because we're gonna add some additional maps in here to make this look a little bit better. So we're gonna jump over here to rendered view like this, and notice how this gives me a preview of this wall. And so remember that rendered view is actually applying light to your surfaces in here, so it's generally going to look more realistic. Well, what I wanna do is within rendered view, I just wanna preview how this is going to look, and um, so I, w I just wanna make sure that I'm in rendered view so I can see what my changes are doing. But I can just pop up that, that appearance tab again, and then I can edit that material over here on the right hand side. And so notice how we also have the ability in here to adjust the scale of the material by clicking and dragging the slider. So when you first open this up before you go into advanced, there's an option in here to edit this that's going to allow us to adjust the scale of the material. You can also rotate it if you wanna do that. And then we'll worry about the roughness and the reflectance in a second. We want to add a map for that first. So remember that one of the maps that we downloaded was a roughness map right here. That roughness map is going to tell Fusion 360 where light should be reflected. And so dark areas mean that things should be reflected a lot. Light areas mean that they shouldn't. This whole thing is pretty light because um, brick shouldn't really be um, reflecting light very much at all. And so what we wanna do is we wanna click in here and instead of using a slider, which you can use um, for like your roughness or other things like that. Notice how when I adjust this and click on okay, that's going to adjust in here and mostly that is going to happen if you have your in canvas render running like this if you don't have your in canvas render running then you're not really going to see a whole lot of changes but if i go back in here edit that roughness right here we also want to adjust the reflectance value. Notice how the higher the reflectance, the more light is going to reflect in here. And it's really not reflecting a whole lot at all. So what we want to do instead is we just want to load in this image for roughness. And actually we want to put it in the roughness slot right here like this and click on apply. And so when we do that, that's just going to apply this image in here telling this where light should reflect. You're not really gonna see a whole lot on a brick material anyway, but it's always a good idea to load that in. But you also want to load in a map for your bump. So notice how I can click this drop down right here. I can check the box to add a relief pattern. Right now this has the relief pattern in here from the concrete material, but what we wanna do is we wanna load in one of the maps from our uh, material that we downloaded. And so there's two different kinds of maps that you can load into this slot. The first is a normal map. What a normal map is going to do is it's going to make your material look bumpy. And so it's basically going to use the light in order to make this kind of bumpy um, with your reflections. Notice how this has the old concrete in here right now, so it's not really doing what we want. We want to click on this image right here. Make sure you check the box for link texture transforms again. We wanna click on this image and we wanna load in the normal map. 
And so if I click on the normal map like this, click on done, it's a little bit hard to see, but if you look at this surface, this looks a little bit bumpier in here with the way that the light reflects off of it. Um, it's not a super strong effect, but it is definitely effect that is in there. So you can use the bump map in order to make things look bumpy, or if you wanna add a little bit more of that kind of in and out look in here, you could also load in the displacement map instead. A displacement map is going to tell Fusion 360 to displace things, to kind of move them in and out. And so what we want to do in this situation is we want to make sure that we've set our data type in this case to a height map. So when we do that, what that's going to do is that is going to basically move your geometry a little bit in order to make it look like um, it's a little bit rougher. All right, so if we look at this, you, you don't really see a whole lot right now um, I think this was a 0 0.0750 right here, but it's just not a big enough sample style size or scale in here um, for you to actually see anything. We're gonna bump this way up. So I'm gonna bump this up to like five inches or something like that. And even then it's kind of subtle, but you can definitely see it. If you look at this, this is moving the material up and down a little bit in order to make this look rougher. And especially pay attention to like the bottom of these bricks right here. So if I set this to zero, Zero. Notice how this wall looks completely flat in here, but if I add a scale in here, and I think the max it's going to let me do in this situation would be 10, but notice how I'm getting a lot more like relief around the edges right here. So you can use this in order to simulate a material being kind of bumpy. And so you can kind of play around with that depth a little bit um, in, order to, um, in order to adjust your result. A little bit but you can use this in order to quickly generate um, materials like this inside of fusion 360 and so that there are some additional additional controls in here that allow you to do things like making your material emissive meaning it's going to emit light you're probably not going to use that all that much um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that for this video but now you've got this brick material saved inside of your model so I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK like this. And if you want to, you can right click on this material and click on the option to copy to my appearances, which is going to basically make this show up in other models, I believe. Um, so if you do want to access this again in the future, you can do that right here. So um, you can use this to kind of build up a library of different materials. And let's create a new project and see if it shows up in there just to make sure. So if I add a circle right here, I'm going to extrude it to 3D. And then if I go into appearances, so right click appearances, if I look under my appearances, notice how that brick material is now saved in here like this, and you can apply it to this surface. And then we could come in here and we could make adjustments to this, like we could bring the scale down, we could adjust the rotation like this if we want to. And so I'm gonna do a complete different video on um, actually like mapping materials to surfaces in here, but this should give you a good idea of how you can create custom materials inside of Fusion 360. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. If you have any questions about creating custom materials in Fusion 360, feel free to leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.